Hey guys, Aaron here with another fountain pen video. And you've got a fountain pen that's sitting in front of you right now. And um, I'm actually not reviewing this fountain pen. Um, the reason why this pen is sitting in front of you is it was the first fountain pen that I actually ever owned. Um, and the reason why that is important is because this is the pen that started the obsession. It started my obsession with fountain pens. And to give you a little bit of backstory before I go into really what I want to talk about in the review or in the video, I'm sorry. Um, this was given to me as a gift um, three years ago. So that's really, and I, but I'm going to go back further. As a kid growing up, um, I always had an infatuation with pens in general. And my, my mother, being um, an artist, used fountain pens and brush pens um, for her artwork. And I always was, would, would be infatuated with her fountain pens and trying to use them and, and you know, learn how to, you know, I, I can't draw at all, but learning how to, you know, write in cursive and everything else as a young child and being able to use the fountain pens was was really awesome. And as I got older, you know, I kind of lost that interest in fountain pens, but I, I always, I mean, who doesn't love a beautiful pen first and foremost? Um, I always had that infatuation and that love for pens in general. Um, and, you know, some of my favorite pens that I use that I literally always have, um, I don't typically like using ballpoint pens. I would always own, um, a lot of different pilot pens um, is what I would use, like gel rollers and a roller ball or, or uh, um, and, and all of those type of pens. And then I got my, my wife got this for me about three years ago. Um, this pen actually came with a, a ballpoint pen, I think, think a, a Parker Jotter. And you can tell this poor pen has been through a lot. Um, I've actually replaced both of these pens. I got them with the original packaging and they are staying in the packaging. Um, but this pen right here, um, you know, it, it, it came with the cartridge. I popped the cartridge in there. I started using the pen and I mean, it was love at first, right? I mean, the minute I started using it, it was so smooth and the flow was so so great and it brought back those memories as a child watching my mom use fountain pens her letting me use her pens and just how exciting that was as a kid and this pen is kind of what started the obsession but this video is not so much about this pen it's more about what followed up after that obsession and not really understanding how to properly maintain a fountain pen um and being scared that I'm going to damage my pen or I'm going to damage the nib or, or ruin it where I can't use it going forward. And there, when I went to, you know, try to research how to properly clean out a fountain pen, there's so much information out there. And, and luckily, you know, I was able to kind of go to the right resources and learn in, you know, from different fountain pen reviewers and different information on the internet. Um, and, you know, one of the big ones that I first started watching was Brian Goulet's videos. And he's got so many great videos on just how to, how to, you know, clean out a, a fountain pen, how to maintain the nib, you know, all of those type of things. You know, Matt Armstrong was another one. Um, Stephen Brown, um, Chris Rap 52 on especially some of the vintage pen videos that I've watched. And another one, because I, I really do love vintage pens as well, that I don't talk about very often, but I really enjoy his videos and he's so informative, is uh, Steph um, from Grand Mia Pens. Um, he has a YouTube channel and he is amazing at restoring vintage pens. Um, and some of his videos are very informative and, and ve very enjoyable to watch. And, you know, through all of that information, I kind of, you know, used a lot of different things and, you know, some things I liked how they work, some I didn't. Um, and obviously when, even though I collect, I don't, you know, have an endless amount of money or funds to spend on things. So, you know, trying to be economical in 
the supplies that I'm purchasing and different things like that to maintain my fountain pens. So that way I can use more money to purchase more fountain pens. And that's really, to me, what it's all about. You want to maintain your fountain pens. You want to make sure that they are working the way that they're supposed to be. And you want to have all the tools that you need to do that. But at the same time, at the end of the day, if I have to choose between that and buying a new fountain pen, I'm probably going to choose a new fountain pen. That's just me. Now, I'm done with the talking piece of it. Um, Now I kind of want to talk or show and talk more about things that are important to own to help maintain a fountain pen. And the first one is this guy, a bulb syringe. Um, To me, I mean, you can almost use any type of bulb syringe. Um, You know, I've seen so many different ones. I mean, you can buy a bulb syringe anywhere. You can buy it at a, um, at a grocery store, at a convenience store, at a, uh, you know, I've seen them at convenience stores, believe it or not. Um, I know um, you can get them at electronic stores as well. You've got different ones that actually have bigger openings. Um, this one I got at, I think, a, a local Walgreens like a long time ago. And um, I actually cut off the end of it to make the opening a little bit wider. And it fits really pretty snug in just about any pen I use. But this thing right here is great for flushing out a, a section, a nib, and a feed unit. And to kind of show you what I'm talking about, just real quick, if I was to take this right here, I would literally just put that right there, stick that in a thing of water and just let the water suck into the nib and feed unit and just expel the water back out. And I would just keep doing that until I see clear water. And so this thing, you know, a bulb syringe is, I think, one of the most important things you should own. Most of your fountain pen reviewers, they're, you know, if you watch any of their pen videos on, on cleaning and maintaining fountain pens, they're going to talk about a bulb syringe. So that's my, my first thing. And you can get a bulb syringe for like, I think I paid like $2 for that. And that's with tax. So I didn't pay much for it at all. And if you can't go somewhere, if you you can't go somewhere to buy it, you can order it online, have it shipped to your home. So a bulb syringe, I think, is something that is you know really critical to have. The next thing is a pin flush, and you know I don't. I think it depends upon you know how many fountain pens you own, how often you let them sit before you clean them out, different things like that. I don't think you necessarily have to have a pin flush. I went over a year and had collected several pins and did not have any pin flush and did not have any issues with my pins. Now, with that being said, you can purchase pin flushes from all sorts of different resources. Um, Gouletpins.com, they sell a, a, a really good pin flush. Uh, Anderson Pins sells one. Um, you can g- go on eBay. Um, I see Montverde, they have a pin flush that I see all the time on eBay. It just pops up randomly, it seems like. There's so many different brands of pin flushes, but um, I don't have any made right now, but um, Stephen Brown has an awesome video on how to make your own homemade pin flush. And I will pop that down in the description. If you want to watch that video and you want to save some money, you can make your own pin flush. And he even shows you how to use the pin flush in the video. Um, I mean, it's literally like three ingredients, ammonia, water, and you've got your um, like dishwashing soap, essentially. Um, and that's it. So it's a very simple video, very easy to make. He, he literally shows you how to make it in the video. But a pin flush is another really, I think, important tool. Um, moving on, you know, now kind of talking about, you know, when you're cleaning out your um, converter. You know, most converters, um, you know, you can take apart, uh, especially obviously on all your modern pins. You have some that you can't. Some of your standard international converters, you can't. Uh, But a lot of them you can take apart. So they're not too hard to clean. Um, Even on a lot of your, um, you know, piston filler fountain pins, you know, you can take portions of it apart to clean out that barrel. But I think something that's important to own are um, wire brushes. These are great for getting that stubborn ink out of, you know, different things such as ink channels in those little crevices that drive you crazy, especially if you have a demonstrator pen or just on your converter in general. 
Um, this is, these are something that's, that are really cool to have. Now, I bought this as a set, as you can tell. These are basically like little pipe cleaners, obviously. Um, I probably have never used these gigantic ones. Now, I use these smaller ones all the time. Um, I use these all the time. I mean, I've used these to help clean out solidified ink sacks and, and, and vintage pens, but I use these a lot in my modern pens too to just get, you know, kind of work in um, some water or maybe even a little bit of pen flush into um, certain crevices that just sometimes when you try to expel water through them, that ink just doesn't remove itself. Um, this I bought at Am on Amazon. I think I got them for maybe five, maybe $10 max, you know, but you can get stuff like this just about anywhere. But these are great tools. They are very versatile. You can use them if you're somebody that eyedroppers pins a lot. You can use them to, you know, kind of run it through to clean out the barrel of the pen. Um, also the cap. Um, for instance, you know, when you have your pen leaks into your cap and you get ink inside of there, especially in that cap liner, um, these come in very handy. Um, these are pretty soft bristles. They I've never had them scratch any material I've used them on or, or cause any damage. Um, and, and as always, when you're using stuff like this, just be cognitive and aware of what you're doing. Um, but that's another thing that I think is something that's very useful on cleaning out and maintaining a fountain pen. The next thing, grippers. So this is my own homemade gripper right here. Um, so it's free. I actually, you know, this is like that drawer material that you um, you use when you're putting in that lining in your drawers. This was literally just in some extra extra leftover piece that I had. So essentially, yes, I did pay for it at some point, but this would have gone in the trash. Instead, I, I kept it and it works great. Now, I also have a gripper that I got from uh, Goulet. I think this one came from GouletPins.com. I think I got it in a kit actually. So I don't know the exact price if you were to buy it separately, but not very expensive, but it kind of gives you two different ideas. They both work well. You can tell this one has been used excessively. I mean, they both have. You may ask yourself, what do I need stuff like this for? Well, when you have that stubborn nib that won't come out um, or, you know, to be a, a fountain pen collector, you also have to be somewhat of a, a tinker. And, you know, these are things that are great. So if you were to try and, and pull, you know, a nib out, I'm going to pull this nib out, but if you were to try to, you would have this one that you could use as leverage that you could wrap around the pen and then use this one to, you know, gently pull that nib out. Um, now I know that like, there's also, they, they sell like, you know, those pliers, those like nib removing pliers and stuff. I like these a little bit better. Now bear in mind, I've never used the pliers, but I like these better only because I'm using my fingers and I can kind of feel what I'm doing better. So I don't feel like I'm going to damage the nib or the feed unit. Um, so these are great tools, you know, obviously this material you can get anywhere. This you can just simply order from uh, Goulet Pins. Um, I'm sure other um, pen websites sell these as well, but I got this one from Goulet Pins. So again, something else that's very useful, very helpful to use. Um, now the next thing um, is some silicone grease. I have this in a bag because it always seems to leak. And then I've got this one too that I think came either in one of my Wingsung piston fillers or it might have been my Twisby. I'm not, I can't remember. But silicone grease is very, very useful for a lot of things. Um, if you watch any of, of Chris Rapp's videos, you know, he put silicone grease on all, all of his threads and different things like that just to make them smoother and work more efficiently. But if you take apart your uh, piston filled fountain pen, if you take apart your converter to clean it out, silicone grease is very useful to add to that piston piece to make it work smoother, to add to the threads and everything else to make it just to where it's not going to seize up on you. And also to make it last longer. Uh, remember, you know, all your pistons, while yes, they have metal on certain pieces, most of it's made out of plastic. Um, at some point that friction is going to wear down that plastic and may cause it to um, break or, or, or um, seize up at some point. Silicone grease um, especially this one is going to help you with that. Um, the other thing is if you're somebody that is thinking about eye dropping 
your fountain pens. You would definitely need some silicone grease to do that. Um, Brian Goulet, you'll notice I got this from Goulet Pens. Brian Goulet has some really cool videos on there. Um, he, they even sell some of like the O-rings and stuff, but on how to show you how to use the silicone grease on the threads and how that is going to benefit you from keeping, especially if you're eyedropping a fountain pen, keep it from leaking. Um, this one here I use primarily to lubricate um, like my pistons, my converters, um, even sometimes when I have pins that have stubborn threads, like my Wingsung 626, its threads are um, a little bit tighter, not as machined as well. And I, when I put this on there, it helped a little bit. Um, so very useful tool. Um, this one I obviously got for free. So again, you know, you if you're smart, you can typically reuse things that you get and use them, make them last for quite a while. A little bit of silicone grease goes a long way. It's one big thing to remember. Um, now the next thing, kind of sticking with um, the theme of like cleaning out the pen, so to speak, and kind of maintaining the inside parts, um, is um, like syringes. Um, now you can buy like blunt tip syringes um, from, I think Goulet sells them, Anderson Pens. Those are two websites I buy a lot of stuff from. You can get them from all sorts of places. Um, now I've got all sorts of different sizes of syringes. These are not blunt tip syringes. Don't freak out. Um, I, uh, I got these, my, my mother happens to, she gets these to, she, um, she used to be a vet tech for many years. And so she gets these syringes for when she's giving shots to animals. So she just, I just said, Hey, do you have any syringes that I could use? And I, you know, She's like, yeah, you can have them. They're free. So that was the benefit of that. Now, um, you may ask, what do I need a syringe for? Well, obviously, you can fill this up full of water. Heck, you can fill it up full of um, uh, even your um, pin flush, for instance, um, and use that to run through a converter um, fill up a barrel, you know, whatever it may be. Um, I find myself using the syringes almost as much as I use the, um, the bulb syringe. And the other cool thing is these are great to use if you're eye dropping fountain pens. It's very easy. Um, you just simply pull your ink up through the syringe and then run that into the barrel of the pen and you're good to go. So I think syringes are another thing to me. You don't necessarily have to own them. It just depends upon what you're wanting to use. I do use them a lot, but again, if you have a bulb syringe, that is a very useful tool and a faucet. You should be good. Um, now, moving on. Um, now, kind of talking about you know maintaining the nib and different things like that. Um, one thing, these are really useful, are brass sheets. Um something that I use a lot and, you know, really these are great for what they call flossing the tines. Um, I think I got these brass sheets probably from Goulet pens. Um, I've had them now for a while. You can tell they've been used a lot. Um, they're great for, you know, flossing the tines, making sure that there is no material in between the tines. Um, for instance, when you're writing on, um, paper obviously your pen is going to pick up some remnants of paper it may get stuck in in that feed channel or in between the tines and and really in, impact your ink flow um it's also these are great to use as just a maintenance tool to make sure that your pen is working appropriately your ink flow is staying where you want it to be um these little brass sheets once you buy them they're going to last you pretty much forever i mean you you're probably not going to have to replace them um, anytime soon and unless you lose them by accident. Um, <clears throat> and again, you can get those just about anywhere. Um, the next thing is these polishing cloths. Um, these are great for polishing um, any type of metal, especially your nib. I use these constantly. I think this is my third or fourth one that I've had, and I've had this one for, for several months now. Um, and you can tell in there it's, it's already been used quite a bit. Um, this thing will be almost completely black by the time I'm done with it. 
I bought these on um, Amazon. I got them in a three pack and I paid, you know, it, they weren't very expensive. I made maybe $20. I know that um, I think I've seen this exact same brand on Anderson Penn's website, um, but these are great. Um, they are great for polishing up any type of metal. I use them even on my vintage pens. Um, you can even run them over your fountain pen, you know, if you just kind of want to polish it up real quick and then buff it out with, you know, a, a, uh, like a polishing rag. Um, so these are, these are awesome. You know, obviously when you're using anything like this, you know, just be cognizant, especially if you have like a gold plated nib to make sure that you're not going just super crazy and just trying to buff out that nib like crazy. Cause you may obviously wear down some of that plating. Um, but I've never had an issue with that. Those polishing cloths work awesome. Whenever I polish up a nib and it, it looks brand new again. So I really like those polishing cloths. Um, the next thing is, is just, this is going to sound weird, but just some simple, this is an old t-shirt that I've, I've cut up different pieces off of it. Um, I use it to just, you know, buff out like nibs, um, dip my pens, you know, after I've, um, ran some, um, cleaning solution on a pen or whatnot, or cleaned it up, just simply take the pen and just, just buff it out with this old t-shirt. Um, and it, it works great, does the job. So again, just something that I've reused that works very well. Um, now another thing and is a loop. Um, you know, some people may say, well, you don't necessarily have to own a loop, but if you're somebody that's going to be collecting fountain pens, and if you're only going to have, you know, if you're only planning on collecting, you know, a couple pens and that's all you want, do you have to have one of these? Probably not. Um, but if you're somebody that's planning on really starting a collection of pens, it would be something that's beneficial. You can obviously buy a jeweler's loop. You know, I got this one from Goulet Pens because it was, I like the fact that it had a uh, backlight to it. Um, that was something I thought was kind of cool. Um, I can't remember the exact magnification of it, um, but it works well. And anytime that I have like a scratchy nib or a nib that's just not working, um, this is a great way for me to see if I have any tines that are misaligned or not where they should be. So then I know kind of what I need to do as far as working on the pen. Um, so this is another thing that I think is, for me anyways, it has been a very great tool to have. Um, this, um, when I got one of my recent pens, one of the pens I've already reviewed, my Conklin All-American, um, this was a very useful tool because I was about to take that nib out and uh, throw it in the trash. Um, and this definitely saved that nib. Um, what's next? So um, and you just heard me maybe talk about cleaning solution a moment ago. And this is a solution that I use a lot. And I actually got the recommendation through another fountain pen collector. And they even use this on a lot of their vintage fountain pens. And technically, it's a three-part solution. Um, you've got your heavy scratch remover, a fine scratch, and then you have a, a clean and shine. I primarily use a clean and shine, especially on my newer pens. Um, I'll use the other ones on some of my vintage pens to polish them up. This stuff actually works really well. Um, especially on acrylic pens, plastic pens, you know, it, it works really, really good. And, you know, I just simply shake the bottle, put it on a, um, you know, a rag or, or like I cut up a piece of a, a t-shirt, put it on there. Um, I rub it all throughout the, the pen body and then I let it dry for just a moment. And then I buff out the pen with a, a dry piece of, of rag and it works awesome. So again, this is Novus. You can buy this. I got those bottles on Amazon. Again, I, I get a lot of stuff from Amazon, but you can get these all over. I've seen them on eBay. Um, I, I, I like this stuff. It works good. Now, the scratch removers, um, these do have abrasives in them. So obviously, you know, if you're collecting vintage pins, this might be something that you can use. I choose to use these versus using like semi-chrome and some of the other materials. Please, no one yell at me in the comments. I do own semi-chrome. I just don't, I don't like the way, I don't like the way it kind of makes my pen feel sometimes. I it feel like there's a, a film on it. 
So the Novus products, um, for me anyways, have worked very well. Now I do use um, buffing pads for other p- vintage pins as well, but those Novus products are great. I can use them on um, modern pins, vintage pins, all sorts of stuff. Um, what's next? So the next thing real quick is um, you guys maybe heard me mention this, but Renaissance wax, this stuff is awesome. Um, Steph from Grammia pins uses this as one as his finishing um, uh, substance on his pins to give them not only that really, really nice shine, but also to help protect the fountain pen from scratches, fingerprints, dirt, dust, grime, all sorts of things. I use this not just on my vintage pens, but I use it on, I've been using it on a lot of my modern pens too. And I've noticed that it, it really helps to reduce the fingerprints, especially on some of my resin materials, uh, especially like the ones that show every fingerprint, like a lot of my black resin pens. Um, you'll notice on the back of the bottle, um, it talks about what all you can use it for. So, for instance, it, it helps to revive furniture, leather, paintings, metals, marble, ivory, and many other surf- surfaces, both um, housed and exposed to weather. And then it freshens color and then um, imparts soft sheen. So, you know, this stuff's really cool. Watch Steph's video. I will post one of his videos on there. It This bottle, I will probably never have to replace and this is another thing. A little bit of this stuff goes a long ways. You know, you simply just put it on the fountain pen, let it dry for just a moment. You'll kind of notice it gets this grayish color and kind of hardens a little bit. And then you just buff it out. And I literally, this product, I again, just use with like an old t-shirt, cut up pieces of an old t-shirt and it works great. Um, so I love that Renaissance wax. It's one of my favorite things to use. And thank you, Steph, for recommending it. Another thing is I have seen this wax. I don't ever recall him mentioning it, but I've seen this wax sitting on Stephen Brown's desk. That shows you how many of his videos I watch. I've seen it actually sitting on his desk. um, And every time I see it, I'm like, hey, he has Renaissance wax. Um, What's up next? Um, This guy, uh, Micromesh. Um, Again, you know, if you're somebody that's only planning on maybe getting a couple of fountain pens and, and not going to be a, a hardcore collector, you may not need micro mesh. Um, but if you're somebody that's going to plan on, you know, starting a, a big collection and you, you want to continue adding to it over the years, micro mesh is something that you'll probably realize at some point is going to be beneficial to you. You're going to get that scratchy nib or that nib that maybe, you know, especially on a pen that you spend a lot of money for and it has baby's bottom um, micro mesh is going to be great to use. Um, this one is actually my second micro mesh piece because I somehow managed to lose my first one, which it had stuff all over it. This stuff though will last a long time. Um, I bought this one. I can't remember if I bought it from Anderson or Goulet. Um, but this stuff is awesome. Um, it works great. Brian Goulet has a great video on how to use micro mesh and, Remember, this is a, it's, it's basically like sandpaper, so to speak. It is an abrasive material. You are taking material technically off of your nib. So, you know, one of the things he suggests in his video is, you know, starting with a nib like that you would not care as much if you happen to damage it or ruin it. When I started practicing with MicroMesh, I used some of my Jin Hao pens with their Jin Hao nibs because I figured I paid two dollars for this pen if i happen to ruin it i'm not going to be uh super upset so micro mesh again may not be something that everyone needs to own but it's something that i for me i I do find myself using um quite a bit um what is next i feel like i'm forgetting some i have all this stuff laid out on my desk you know guys pretty much you know for me that that's about it you know, there's a lot of other things I can talk about. Like, you know, I talk about Mylar paper, but then it's just you're getting into so much information. It's overwhelming. Um, this video has already gone on for 29 and a half minutes and you guys have listened to me talk. Um, again, all of this stuff, I'm going to post links to videos that helped me out a lot throughout the last, you know, three years of collecting and, and accumulating pens, just learning how to 
maintain them and, and help them. Um, as always, I, I hope this video has been useful. Um, if it has, please give me a thumbs up. I apologize for the length of it. It's just a lot of information. And I thought about breaking it into two videos. I was like, no, if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can either skip through it, fast forward, or just not watch it. Um, if you've made it this far, though, um, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Um, I will be doing another fountain pen review pretty soon. Um, that's about it, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think. Tell me your comments. Tell me about some products that work really good for you. There are a few things I did not mention in this video only because they may be applied to um, what I use on vintage pens. So I'm not really going to go into all of that. Maybe I'll do another video at some point on vintage pens, but I am in no way, shape or form an export expert on how to restore vintage pens. Um, that would be someone like Steph. Um, as always, guys, I hope you have a wonderful time. This hobby has been amazing for me. I love collecting fountain pens. I love sharing my passion for fountain pens. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy collecting as well. Again, guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you later.